Hi everyone, how are we doing? Hello, hello. Today I am going to be answering your burning questions. Pinterest question from Waleki that says, in your email you are talking about that you have to pin a number of times a day. Should they be new pins, repins or pins from other people to your own board? So the advice from this has kind of changed depending on um, the algorithm and kind of what you're wanting to do, okay? So for me, I always used to say it's a really good idea to have like a mixture of pins and I do still stand by that in a way where your ideal Pinterest account should be a place where your target market can go to basically be surrounded by all of their perfect things and I say things which is really vague I know but it could be someone who is a gothic bride who wants like black wedding dresses uh red red lip lip lipstick last all day makeup uh, gothic jewelry gothic head headwear gothic shoes tattoos so there's no like one one thing I'd love for you to think about this as your target order audience's dream board okay so my uh, thinking behind this is that I will do roughly about 15 to 20 percent other people's pins to make up those boards because not everyone is going to sell gothic head dresses, gothic shoes, gothic tattoos, all that kind of stuff, obviously, right? So this is where I would have other people's pins. And these can be inspirational pins, pins of like other things that your target audience would like. And I will mix in some of my own products, because naturally, people that go to um, gothic tattoos might also like uh, gothic jewelry right? So that's kind of what I would do on that. And the rest of the pins I would have in boards. So, so uh, product boards. So like, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, dangly earrings, stud, stud, stud earrings, uh, blue necklaces, all, all that kind of stuff. I would kind of go a little bit deeper than the cat, the categories within your Etsy shop, your own website, whatever. But I would have boards set up like that. Okay. And then I would also have uh, your products mixed in with other boards. Okay. So it's kind of like a twofold approach. Number one, make sure that your that all of your products are pins in some way, shape, shape or form in like pin in a, not pin boards, in a product pin boards. Okay. And then the second thing would be to, like I said, create your uh, target audience's favorite things and scatter your product pins that make sense, of course, within these boards. Okay. Um, if you're in the H the HBSA, there is a massive, massive Pinterest mini course in there. Um, and that's where I kind of go a lot deeper on how many times a day, when you should post, specifically how you should, because the biggest thing with this is that you need to make sure, a bit like Etsy, that you are using the correct keywords. Pinterest is at the end of the day, a search engine. So you have to make sure in order for it to work for you, you have to make sure that it is all keyworded correctly, okay? Hi, when selling on Etsy and looking to add a thank you note, is it okay to add a QR code QR code that states a discount? I can't seem to find Etsy's rules. Um, so I've never had any issues with this myself. So like you could say, hey, like uh, the next time you shop with us on Etsy, here's a 20 percent off code in, in fact Etsy encourages this because they do send out a thank you code and actually in, instead of you doing um like a little note or a little discount card what you could do is you could just get Etsy to automatically send a thank you coupon uh via email and, I, and I'd actually probably recommend that more because it comes through as like a little uh, ping on their phone it comes through as a email um, and basically, Etsy will remind you that, hey, there's this thing, uh, coupon that you got to use. So I'd actually rec re recommend that um, rather than doing like a little uh, card. I think if you're going to do a card, a really cool way to do it is to have it a little bit more interactive. So what I used to have is those little scratch off cards and you can quite easily make this. All, all you do is you print off a bunch of cards uh, with a, di a discount code on. You get like those uh, rub off uh, I can't think what they're called, like rub off stickers and you stick that over the code and get the person to rub it off with a coin and then, and then it's there. So that's actually what I would rec recommend more. After the post thumb, uh, which was our most, our, well, I say most recent challenge, we actually have the list, the list of thumb coming up uh, in, in June. So if you're listening to this in June, after June, 
the, li the list of thon is our like next challenge. Um, but we had a challenge called the post of thon, which was a big social media challenge for makers. So if you hear me talk about that, that's kind of what that is. Um, I've been posting on socials a lot and I've been getting a lot of views on my reels from non followers, but how can I get those people to follow or subscribe to the newsletter? Simple, give them a call to action. This is one thing that I don't see enough people doing and they will get really excited. They'll have views, they'll have uh, engagements, whether that's comments, hearts, favorites, whatever. And they'll be like, oh yeah, awesome. But then there's nowhere that the person absorbing that, listening to that, watching that can take things further. OK, so having some kind of call to action at the end of your reel, at the end of your carousel post, um, at the end of your video, your live, you know, whatever, having some kind of call to action, making it really, really, really clear. Now, another method that I have done over and over again that has always made things snowball and you will notice that when we talk about the list the listathon on instagram we say comment the word listathon below and that is because we actually use many chat which and this is not sponsored or anything like that i just really enjoy the tool um and what that is is it's like an automatic uh messenger tool okay not me not messenger but like dm tool right and what that means is, is that every time someone comments that trigger word, it will then send the link or the note or the message or whatever you want it to do straight to that person. And what that means is, as we know, the more people that engage with that post, the more that, po that post will get pushed. Etsy question from Sandrine that says, if I need to change my listing photos on Etsy, should I start a new listing or will this not affect my SEO? So, um... The official thing from kind of like Etsy and what we always say is it's really titles, tags, attributes, which are the main kind of factors, I guess. If you don't have image alt text, which is basically where you go in and you attach a keyword heavy description to your Etsy listing pictures, which I would rec recommend that you all do, not only for like SEO side, side of things, Google image searches, all that sort of stuff, but also because visually impaired people can actually then read what your image is rather than try to, you know, figure out what on earth is going on on the page. Um, because, you know, also as well, Sometimes I know this has happened a lot recently where Etsy uh, listings haven't loaded right and something's happened. There's been a connection interrupt somewhere and instead of loading the picture, it will just show you the text so you know you can kind of guess what the picture is based on what the text is. OK, so if you have that, it may affect your SEO. OK. However, if you haven't, I would say it's fine, okay? How, well, what, what I will say with that, though, is sometimes people will change their pictures and say, Steph, like, what's going on? You said that it wasn't going to affect things, and yet things have gone downhill. What, what I will say is that shopper habits and how your target audience reacts to that listing potentially might decline, might go up, but it might change in some way, shape, or form, depending on the pictures, because obviously, as we know, pictures are a massive, massive deal. So if you're changing that first image, second image, whatever, and you find that things do change for better, for worse, it might be simply how people are interacting with that listing. So all of that to say is that I would recommend if it's if it's a listing that you get a lot of views from, a lot of sales from, I personally wouldn't change it. Instead, I would copy it and test the new listing image. So that once and for all, I mean, test for like six, six months or more, once and for all, you know how your target audience reacts, okay? And the very next time you need to do uh, listing photos or anything like that, you don't have to worry about, oh, how should I take the pictures? What do my people, like you, you've already tested this, you already know. So Karen says, how far in advance do you need to post listings for example, autumn, Christmas? Okay, I love this question. So um, the rough rule of thumb is obviously we know it takes between 30 to 90 days for the Etsy algo, the Google algo. Like what I will say is lots of people will say, you know, um, 
I have to worry about the Etsy algorithm. What are they doing? Da, da, da. But this also accounts for your own website as well. Like, I don't know if you guys know, but it takes even longer for Google to, I mean, some sometimes it takes weeks for the crawlers to even find your product pages, to even find your website. I mean, there are things you can do kind of push that process along. But, you know, we aren't guaranteed that when we post a product on your own website that it's going to get seen within two weeks, two months, whatever. So that's why we always say at least three months before the actual event, because we know it takes that amount of time for the algos to crawl it, find it, put it where it's going to go in the in this in the searches. Um, and basically, yeah, for you to start ranking for these things. I would say four months is a really nice chunk of time. Okay. It's a really nice, like, um, kind of nice rounded number. So I'd say a good four months beforehand. So that means so it's de December, November, October. So that means really the beginning of September is when you're putting Christmas things out. And don't forget as well that there are a lot of people who will do Christmas in July. They will do Halloweeny stuff for the whole of autumn. Um, like there's 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 no longer that strict kind of like barriers between okay, this is where um we sell Hall Halloween stuff, this is where we sell autumn stuff, this is where we sell now they're a lot more blurred. Okay. What's the best way to market with a low budget? Ooh, best way, social media, email. Um, that would be my two kind of cat categories, I'd say. Low budget, I mean, that can be anything from like 50 bucks to 100 bucks to 1,000 bucks. Like what's kind of low budget for you? That would be the first question. I would say free, i.e. you're just putting your time, effort, energy into doing these things. It would be social media, e email. Those would be like the two top things that I would say to do. Uh, we know that social media works, like love it, hate it, despise it, whatever. You, we all know that it works and it works for a very specific set of reasons. There's psychological triggers that mean that social media, whether fortunately or unfortunately, will always work because of how our human brains work. It's not an algorithm thing. It's not anything like that. It's just how our brains work. So it will always work. Okay. Um, email again, because it's going straight to your inbox, you get a little ping on your phone. Uh, again, depending on how you do it, it will always work. If you had, let's say, I don't know, a hundred bucks a month to spend and you're like, right, I'm going to set this aside to market and to elevate some things. You have a choice of two things, I'd say, really. Number one, you could use that 100 bucks a month to maybe pay a VA, a virtual assistant, someone like that to help you with your socials, your emails, all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, there's, there's, I'd probably say there's actually three ways. So that's the first way. The, the second way would be you could upgrade the tools that you have. So, for example, if you're using like the free version of MailChimp, you could upgrade that to like a slightly swankier, easier to use, more in-depth version of, of MailChimp. Um, and this could be for reasons such as better automations. You can segment things a lot better, all that sort of stuff. Um, and the third thing would be paid ads. Now, I'm not going to lie. I know a fair amount about Facebook ads, meta ads, Instagram ads. I've been running them continuously for about six, six years and putting a lot of budget in like thousands a month in into them. And I can say with some cer certainty that a hundred bucks a month probably isn't going to get you a lot in the way of results. And that's because it takes a lot more time these days for Facebook ads to get out of learning, to settle themselves down. You're probably spending about a hundred bucks in like three, four, five, six days before they've actually settled themselves and you, and you know where you're going. And um, that's in regards to ads where you're, where you're looking at getting sales directly from those ads. Okay. Would you reduce your prices for a craft market? So would you, AKA go to a craft market with cheaper prices on your products? Right. Got you. So, um, no, I would have some kind of show slash slash craft market offer on a particular category or, or product or products, right? but I wouldn't reduce the prices. I think it's actually 
quite important to have some kind of cohesiveness with your pricing across everywhere that you sell. I personally would make it really, really easy. One thing I that frustrates me is, and one of the big reasons why I stopped doing craft fairs, uh, not even craft fairs, because I, I never did craft fairs. Like I, I think I should be really upfront about that and, tra and transparent is that I did, I did one craft fair and I was like, never again. Like I'm going for the big boys. Like I am not spending a day and a half setting up my booth, making stuff, uh, making my pricing, my signs, my like packing my car, driving, setting up. I'm not doing any of that unless I know I'm going to be making four, five, six grand within a weekend at the very least. So you are going to be looking at that and being like, okay, where can I do that? Well, naturally, again, we are going back to, is it a marketing issue or is it a conversion issue? If you know that your store converts well, if you know that people are, you know, they're interested, they like what you sell, then we know it is a numbers, it is a viewers, it's a, a, foot, a footfall issue, okay? And that is where I personally was like, I am just going to save up and I'm going to do like one or two big ones a year. And that approach helped me a lot more because I knew exactly who was going to be there. I knew exactly how many people they were expecting through the door. I knew exactly where to be placed in the tent. because I had, had like a big craft tent. I knew exactly where I wanted to be placed in between people that had certain products for sale. Like I knew exactly where I wanted to be. And I actually like, I booked that, pati that particular spot. And then the, the, like the, the next two, three years, I booked that exact same spot because I knew that people would go around the tent in a very specific way. And therefore when they came across what I sold, they wouldn't have already seen it. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I've loved answering your questions. If you want to chat with me, please do reach out on Instagram DM and do not forget as well that we do have, they'll be in the show notes if you're listening back to this or I'll get the, the team to pop it in the comments. We do also have the conversion rate masterclass, which is basically how to get more sales in your handmade business in seven days or less, which is the best free training that's always there. It's always ongoing uh, that we've ever had. So um, yeah, thank you so much for leaving me your comments, asking me your questions, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye everybody.